Hi guys, my name is Anne Kreis. I hope you're doing well and I welcome you to a new video. Clean architecture is a famous design approach popularized by this uh, book with the same name from Robert C. Martin and has been not exclusively but widely adopted by the Android community. Nowadays, those ideas are even included in the official Android um, architecture guidelines from Google. The aim is to provide a base for building modular, scalable and testable applications by separating concerns into distinct layers. Following along with the Android guidelines, you end up with a UI layer, data layer and a domain layer. Hereby, the UI layer is responsible for presenting our actual data. The data layer is essentially responsible for serving and persisting data for our applications. The domain layer can finally be seen as the interconnection between those two layers. It encapsulates the business logic of our application in so-called use cases. So when we implement our application, we often end up with reusable components, those use cases, and we can then use those use cases in our view models to, yeah, for example, create data, receive data, and so on. Here you can see a typical use case. In this case, it's uh, for creating a node, and for example, node application. So we have here our um, node repository, which comes from the data layer, and is responsible finally for persisting our data and also for receiving data. In this case, of course, we have a create node use case, so we only want to invoke it for persisting a node. It's very common that you name your use cases after your business rule. So, like I said, in this example, it's creating a node. However, because a use case is always responsible for one single purpose, you also end up with creating those pipeline functions here. In this case, I call it call, but you can also call it like execute. And it's only responsible finally for invoking the business rule. So finally, in your view model, you always end up with many instances of such use cases and always invoke them with .call. If we go back to our use case with a small trick, we can get rid of this pipeline function here. We can use operator overloading, which is a Kotlin feature. To do so, the only thing we need to do is to say here, operator fun invoke. And here the invoke is the operator we overload. So instead of implementing here the call function, we implement the uh, overload of the invoke. And just to mention, of course, here's no code visible, so no coroutines needed. But just for showcasing, I left here the suspend keyword. So as you can see, you can also use coroutines with that. So and what this essentially allows us is now, if we go back to our view model here, we can delete this function here and directly invoke the function of our use case at this variable. So instead of writing those pipeline functions over and over again, you can now, if you like, just use this operator overloading to directly call your business logic of your respective use cases. Let me know in the comments what you think. I know this might be a little bit controversial because one might doesn't know that this operator overloading exists and then it doesn't know how to invoke the actual use case. But I think if you do it consistently, it might be a little trick to tweak your code. So I hope you had some takeaways, like the video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, activate the notification bell, and I hope to see you soon.